What's up guys, I'm Chasing Lily. Welcome to episode number 22 of Robin's Revival. And in today's episode, we have got a lovely championship fixture against our rivals, Bristol City, coming up. Hit like and subscribe. Let's go get this done. So here we are then, just in time for the big game against Bristol City. Before we get into that though, let's have a look at how things are going. In terms of the table, we currently sit 6th, 49 points, puts us level on points with Charlton above us, Nottingham Forest below us, and just 2 points ahead of Bristol City. So this could be a very big game. Reading as well, another of our rivals, also just 2 points behind us. So we do have, we do have some competition, it's not cut and dry, but... Winning today at least should guarantee, or even getting a point today to hit that 50 point mark, should guarantee our safety in the championship, which is what we're really playing for today. In terms of what you have missed since we last met, which was the Coventry City game, I believe. Yes, it was. So my brain just failed then. It was the Coventry City game. I remember that happening. So, <laughs> I only recorded it yesterday. Three or draw against Fulham away with Daniel Aguirre getting a brace, Mark Helm getting himself a goal. Daniel Aguirre got a brace in a 3-2 loss against Ipswich. He scored again in a 2-1 loss against QPR. Scored again with, alongside Luke Thomas in a 2-0 win against Conference. I think that actually has been the last game we played. I don't know, I remember Luke Thomas scoring. It's fine. Right, we, can, we beat them 2-0 with Daniel Aguirre getting another brace. We beat Barnsley. 3-2 with goals from, two goals from Gilbert and a goal from Marlon Pack. We then beat, I think that was where we were last here. My brain is entirely on fire right now. Anyway, we beat Forrest 2-0 with a Ryan Tullock brace. Drew one all in the FA Cup third round with Daniel Gee scoring. Then lost 4-0 to Birmingham, which was a bit of a shocker. Beat Leighton Orient 5-1, a brace from Alejandro Ganasha, a goal from Amari Forsney. I don't think you've seen on a live com yet. He will probably get involved today. And Ryan Tullock and Alex Gilbert also scoring. And Ryan Tullock got another brace. Alex Gilbert got another goal in a 3-1 win against Cardiff, which brings us to today. However, as you may have guessed, those of you who know how calendars work, the January transfer window is closed. There has been some business. I'm going to go through that for you very fast. So the window is mostly players leaving. Will Boyle was the first to leave. He left at the start of January. £29,000 to Inverness Caledonian Thistle. So £1,000 profit on him, which isn't bad for a guy who only played one game for us. But he's gone. He was never going to be a first-team regular. He was getting unhappy, so it was just time to move him on. Next up, Jack Payne joins Burton for £81,000. He was starting to decline a little bit earlier than I'd have liked. He came into us on a free, so it's still profit. He was starting to decline earlier than I'd have liked. He was still playing fairly regularly for us, as I recall. I say fairly. It feels like I played him more than I did. Four games this season. He wasn't really breaking into the side. He was kind of a backup to Mark Helm at that point. So it just made sense to sell him on. His contract was running out. I just took the money and ran, really, because renewing his contract just to get more money for him would have been entirely pointless. One of our youngsters, Ryan Alabiosu, left. He has joined Enyimba Abba in Nigeria for £25,000. They came in from the end of his contract. I just sold him on early because he wasn't really going to do anything for us. So it just sort of felt like it was time to move on. He was never developing at the rate we thought he might have done. He probably could have still become something if I'd given him a lot of time, but... It just didn't feel like it was a good move for us in terms of where we are right now. I don't think he was ever going to become a championship player. So we've just moved him on and he's gone to play in Nigeria. So good luck to him. Jordan Rhodes has joined St. Johnston for 15 and a quarter thousand. Similar situation to Jack Payne. He was declining. He was scoring when he played for us, but he was playing for us so rarely that at 30 to 32, 33, it just made sense to move him on. Um... I mean, he's about to 34 in two days. I thought I'd just take the money for him while I could get some money for him. He's gone. He's done well for us, considering he was brought as backup. But it, we made some money on him, and that's kind of what's important to us at this point. And the big out was Jonathan Dinshay, who has gone to Forest Green Rovers for £100,000. It might, could rise to 145 or even more with add-ons. 
he came to us as a player I had a high hope for. Didn't really play for us. Had a good season at Newport last season, which kind of, I guess, facilitated this move. Forrest Green feels like a good move for him at this stage in his career. He wasn't really developing beyond being sort of third or fourth or fifth choice at centre-half. So we've moved on. I think we've, we've got Finn Burns, who kind of fits that role anyway. So it's not like he wasn't replaceable. He's 24. His development ceiling probably isn't far off anyway, despite him saying he has some potential. So hopefully he'll have some fun at Forest Green, and we'll get some money if they ever sell him on. On the inside, only one in of note, I've, I've loaned Harry Leonard from Blackburn. He's a striker, come winger, slash just back. He's, he's essentially replacing Jordan Rhodes. I don't know how much game time he'll get. He's got some potential. He's one of those players I just kind of want to keep an eye on, see what happens. He's got a couple of years left in his contract at Blackburn, so we can just sort of see how he plays, how he develops. You will see from our coach report, he's only a banner arm, a national standard player, could become a championship standard player. Actually, our scouts lied to me and said he was already a championship quality player before I brought him in, which was problematic. But we'll have a look, we'll see what he does for us, see how he develops, see if he plays at all. And if he does, and he does well, maybe we'll make a bid for him at the end of the season. We should have some transfer money to spend at the end of the season. So we'll see how that goes for us. But that pretty much rounds up the transfer side of things, the transfer window. We're still in the black, money-wise, but projection-wise, it's looking shaky. We do need a good cup run to kind of balance the books. We're playing Reading in the forefront. I'm not going to show you that game today because we've done Reading before. And I feel we'll probably do Reading again at some stage in the near future. So I didn't want to play that game. If we get a good draw in the fifth round or if we go out, you know, it's neither here nor there. We are just trying to survive the championship. And if we can sneak into the playoffs, all the better, really. But let's let's get on with it. Let's go play Bristol City before this episode ends up being a thousand hours long. So starting line today, we've gone with Wallacott in goal. We've got Thompson, Critchlow, Jack and Gordon at the back. Dreher and Pack in central midfield with Tullock on the left-hand side. He's been scoring a lot of goals from that left-hand side, so I'm very excited by that. Then the gear is starting on the right-hand side there. but a bit of an injury crisis on the right-hand side at the moment, or a bit of players just generally not fit crisis so he's starting on the right hand side today which is a worry because he is our top goal scorer he's the top goal scorer in the championship actually at this point mark helm starts an attacking midfield with tyree simpson up top savage Ademayo, williams gilbert conroy Bowden, and glavo in the bench in terms of players who are missing uh thomas luke thomas is currently out with an injury and garnacho is just not fully fit same with forson who is not fully fit so won't be playing today but we will see him in the future, I'm sure we'll see him in the future. Lobo Girardo, not quite fully fit, so he isn't starting today. But we've got a good enough side to get some business done, I think, today. We'll just go see how that goes. Right, media, uh, team talk is going to be a carryover performance in, from the last match into this one. We'll do well. Joe Wallacott seems unsure, which is slightly concerning. So does, Joe Wall uh, so does Tyree Simpson. So we will do a nice little outstretch arms. Pump fists, there we go. I have faith in you. Go to play without any pressure. Tunnel interview because this game is on the telly. What's the secret on your good away goal record? Well, we've got more freedom than anyone else or something. Bit of purple patch for a goal recently. That's got to be pleasing. I'm not complaining. Scoring goals is always fun because we like scoring goals. Let's skip the preliminaries because we've all seen the TV, the TV thing before. And let's just get into this. We're going to do a quick shout of encouragement to start the game off. And let's see if we can get a result against Bristol City at Ashton Gate. Right, throw in for us, or throw in for Bristol City. I forgot we're playing away. They're in red today. Kilibali on the ball. Gordon makes a tackle. James with the ball now back to Mengi. Taden Mengi is a player I'd love to sign, by the way, in the summer if I can find the money for him. A Semenayo picks up the ball on the left-hand side. Ball goes back to Messina. Williams to James. James, ball forward to Dione. I just realised that's Matty James playing for them, and he's far, far too good to play in the Championship. Far, far too good to play for Bristol City. <laughs> to be honest, we could be in a lot of trouble here. They've got a couple of players who have some serious calibre in their team in Mengi and Matty James. Great finish, though, to put it low beyond Wallacott. And Joe Wallacott's been complaining recently he's not had enough first-team football, which is why I thought I'd give him a go today. But usually he's a big match goalkeeper. He's not being a big match goalkeeper today. And we currently sit ninth in the championship as we get a throw in now with Gordon. And Gordon with the ball to Helm. Helm tackled immediately by Williams through to Hugill. 
Klibali, James, James to Dione, Hell heads that one away, only as far as Tade and Mengu though, and Williams picks that ball up to Semeneo, Semeneo back to Williams, Williams to James, we've got to really watch Matty James, we're going to have to start closing him down, I think that'll be a team instruction happened in the near future as Viner puts a crossover, Semeneo heads it into the box, Hujel is there, oh, it's 2-0. It's 2-0, and it's time to do some kind of shouting. We're going to berate the team, because this is not an acceptable performance against Bristol City at any juncture. Certainly not today, whilst you guys are all watching. Just, what was that defending? That was Critchlow and Jack, uh, Critchlow and Hugill and Wallacott just kind of conspiring to be terrible. Through in now for Bristol City. I've made some changes just to try and take Matty James out of the game a little bit. I don't know how well it'll work, but we'll soon find out as Hugill... Plays it to Viner, Viner to Dione, back to Viner. We're not defending well. I might have to drop us back actually to a balanced mentality as Hugh Gill gets a third for them. I just want to avoid this becoming an absolute shambles at this point, if I'm completely honest, because that's how it's looking. It's looking like it could be an absolute shambles today. I feel like we're a bit impotent with Aguirre on the on the right hand side as well, which is a concern. He's not played on the right wing much for a long time at this stage. And I feel like he's letting us down. Same with Ryan Tullock. Wallacott is definitely letting us down, but I don't have another goalkeeper on the bench, otherwise he would be leaving the pitch very rapidly. Pack. Ball back to Jack. Now Jack to Gordon. Gordon to Tullock. We really need to start looking a bit more like a football team. Tullock to Pack. Pack, ball goes forward, Helm heads it on for Tyree Simpson. Simpson had a gear looking for the underlap there and didn't find him. But Drea finds Thompson, finds a gear, he must have been offside, I think. He wasn't offside, there's no flag. Daniel Gee has scored to get us back into this game. I was convinced he was offside there. What am I missing? What am I missing with this offside here? Did he just move far too quickly? He was definitely offside. <laughs> well, take it, but he was definitely offside. That's very curious. It's going to show us the tight offside here. I'm going to get proven wrong. Or he was just, just level, I guess, or just behind level. That's worked out way better for us than I could, could have hoped. And now we just need to encourage the team back into the game here. Wallacott needs to get his ideas, to buck his ideas up, I guess, is the phrase in English I'm looking for. But, you know, who knows? Maybe there is still a way back into this game. So we've reached half time, it's still 3 1. We are slowly getting back into the game with those tactical changes, but probably not as quickly as I'd like. But to show people the recent praise is justified. I am going to have a bit of a moment at Joe Wallacott because I'm well, not going to throw a water bottle in. You weren't good enough, your mistake cost us demotivated him now. That was, that was smart. Smart move. Good work, Lamely. Really, really smart move. Okay, let's tell Lewis Gordon and Tyree Simpson. Romney Critchlow that they need to make a difference out there because no one else is, quite frankly. And <laughs> someone's got to do something. Someone's got to step up here. Tyree Simpson is not performing at all either. And in terms of the bench, I don't really know what I've got in terms what's got to replace him. Gladwin, maybe, is an option. We'll see. We'll see how it looks at about the hour mark. Mengi now picks up the ball. If we can get Tade and Mengi sent off, that would be a beautiful thing. Critchlow to Williams to, to Hugill. Ball goes out wide to Semenai. A bit of a hospital ball to be honest. And Thompson picks it up. Again, ball forward to Helm. Helm needs to do something here. Ball to Tullock. Ryan Tullock is through. Ryan to off the post. Ryan Tullock has scored so many recently that you'd have bet money on him to put that away. And I guess it's just not his day in front of goal. Throw in now for Bristol City. I've made all of my changes now, unfortunately, which is a bit of a concern. I also started playing for free kicks to try and get someone sent off. Because <laughs> that might be our best way back into this game as Messina picks up the ball left-hand side. Thompson makes a tackle. Good ball down the flank, but doesn't quite find Thompson. Kulabali to James. James to Reyes. But always press usual. That's a good shout. As James gets through and it's 4-1. Oh, I made as many changes as I could, and I could have replaced about a dozen more players, actually, at this point. I think the last tactical change I might need to make once this is done is I might swap Simpson and Aguirre. If I can put Aguirre in a position to convert some more chances that come his way, that might be a way forward for us. Simpson's certainly not doing enough on the wing to make me believe in him. 
fact, let's do a quick tactics here because maybe there's a way to salvage something from this game. What if we put a Gi and Simpson up top together? We'll go to kind of a botched 4-4-2 where we'll put Helm out on the wing. What's his best role out there? I'm assuming it probably is wing. It is winger on attack, that will do. What can we get a Gi and, Sim and Simpson doing? We know a Gi is a solid pressing forward on attack. Simpson, I'd assume, is similar. Probably. Let's just have them both press him on attack and see if we can wind up the defender. I don't know if that works together as roles or not, but we've got to throw the dice somehow. Nothing else is working for us. The extra body up top might help us. Joe Wallacott, not really convincing me to play him more often at this stage. I thought he might step up. He's always been a big game player for us in the past. But he's not being that big game player today. We're going to go more attacking, just get more, a few more balls forward. And in fact, while I'm thinking about tactics, let's make another little tactical change where we are just shooting on sight, early crosses if we can. Let's go with a bit more direct football. And when I say a bit more direct, we're going fully long ball. That is now the plan. Anything else we want to be doing here? Probably not. Out of possession, we could probably stand to drop the defensive line back a little bit. That's always a good plan. And in fact, I'm going to narrow up our defence as well, because that's going to help. And we are going to get stuck in any opposition instructions I can do to make this a little bit more comfortable. I'm going to go with a trigger press always on Seminayo. And in fact, we're just going to go in hard on Seminayo as well. And I feel like Messina has punished us as well, so we're going to press him a little bit. That's probably wise as things go. What do we want me to do with this fella? Trigger press him. Cool. Let's trigger press him. Let's just go with that. Let's see if that gives us a little bit more anything in the last 10 minutes. Throw in now, it's with Thompson. We're not going to win this game. We'll get a draw out of it. But another goal would be nice as Johnny Williams finds Tyree Simpson. Simpson through to Tullock. What can Tullock do? Can he provide anything? He sort of provided something. Sort of. That was a bit of a goal mouth action for us at least. And Helm now on the ball to Williams. We are starting to look a bit more urgent. Tullock picks up the ball. Cuts it back for Tyree Simpson. He's brought down but Tullock picks the ball back up. Has he shot? Oh, he's had a pop from range. And frankly, that was terrible. Goal kick. Darlow to Moore. Moore now. We need to get this ball back as quickly as we can as Dione picks it up. Hell Thompson to Mark Semenai. I thought he already did that, but there we go. Dione, come on, let's cut him down. Let's do something to get the ball off of him as quickly as we can. We have managed to give them a throw in, but a bit of a chance to regroup. A third goal here would be terrible. So, um, finds Dione. Dione into the box. Hugo, oh, it's got rid of by Helm. Atkinson to Messina. Messina to Reyes. Final whistle, it's 4-1. We've been humiliated by Bristol City. I'm not looking forward to the press conference after this one. I will tell you that for free. Ah, furious, we've made it too easy for our rivals. That is a water bottle throwing moment. I'm sorry, it is. I don't like doing it, but it is a water bottle throwing moment. Some players were at least motivated by that, which is a good start. Having players missing didn't help us there at all. And it feels like we could have done better. And hopefully that's not completely derailed our hopes of the championship. Or the, the playoffs, I should say. Uh, can I finish the Bristol City? I mean, actually, to be fair, we didn't do things where we went to play our football. It happened as hard to win. Why do you feel the blame lies with you? I'm going to go with, it's my job. It's my fault. It's my fault. I'm going to take the flat. It's my fault for that one. What do you make of our team's performance today? I'm going to go with, we were really poor. I want to apologise to the fans. Frankly, I think we should be giving them their money back for that one, if I'm honest. But we'll see if that actually happens. I haven't, have I got the, I haven't got the, we've given them their money back thing. Jack asked to discuss club matters. I think you were harsh on the team. I would like to, do you know what? I'm going to tell Odomayo to sort that out because he should have, probably play. Anyway, let's ask him to sort that one out. That's a good thing. He's dropped his team. There we go. Ademayo was like, son, what are you doing? Shut up. Right, let's see what we're going to come back for the next game, shall we? 
Right, there's 16 games left, so we're going to come back to this game against West Brom, which is about halfway to the end with our game against QPR. Obviously, we get a good fifth round draw if we get to the fifth round. We'll come back a little bit early, but I think we're probably two episodes left on this season. It feels about right for how things are going, given that we're probably not in a chase for the playoffs as things stand. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, I've been chasing lamely. Don't forget like, subscribe, comment, ring bell, all that good stuff. Get it done. Get it done. Go on, go on. I dare you. I dare you. See, I knew you could do it. I knew you could do it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I've been chasing lamely. I'll see you all very soon. Have a good one.